Miss Sally. Wonder why I find out like her is mixed up in the mission, guys. She is a beautiful doll, all right, with 100% eyes. It is too bad that such a doll wastes all her time being good. How could she make any money? Maybe she owns a piece of the mission. Yeah. Hey, Benny Seltz. Harry, Harry the horse, how are you? You know Nicely Nicely Johnson. Yeah, of course. Nicely Nicely, thank you. Tell me, about Nate in Detroit. Is he got a place for his crap gear yet? We don't know yet. The heat is on. He's still looking for a place. Well, tell him I'm moving and looking for action. I just acquired 5,000 potatoes. 5,000 bucks? If it can be told, where did you acquire this fine bundle of lettuce? I collected the reward of my father. <laughs> Everybody is looking for action. I wish Nate Why, could Lieutenant Brannigan! Mr. South Street, it is Lieutenant Brannigan of the New York City Police Department. A pleasure, Lieutenant. Any of you fellas see Nathan Detroit? And which Nathan Detroit is that? I mean, the Nathan Detroit has been running a floating crap game and getting away with it by moving it to a different spot every night. Why do you ask us this, Your Honor? I'm telling you this because I know you two bums work for Detroit, rustling up customers for his crap game. We do? Yeah. Ah. And you can tell him from me. I know that right now he's out there trying to find a spot for his crap game. Well, no one's going to give him a spot because they all know that Brannigan is breathing right down their neck. Hi, Nathan. Fellas. I am having terrible trouble. Everybody's scared on account of that lousy Brannigan. And I can't... Something wrong, Mr. Detroit? No. Hello, Lieutenant. I hope you don't think I was talking about you. There are other lousy Brannigans. <laughs> Detroit, I've just been talking to your colleagues about your crap game. I imagine you're having trouble finding a place. Well, the heat is on, as you must know from the fact that you now have to live on your salary. <laughs> Nathan, did you find a place? What does that cop want from me? What, am I a sex maniac? I merely run a crop game for the convenience of those who want a little action. In return for which I take a small cut. Is that a crime? Nathan, did you find a place? Did you find a place for the game? Did I find a place? Did I find... Sure, I found a place. We are holding the crap game tomorrow night at the Radio City Music Hall. How are you going to fix the ushers? I've tried all the regular places. The back of the cigar store, the funeral parlor. You once mentioned there may be a spot at the Biltmore Garage. I was over to the Biltmore Garage. Spoke to Joey Biltmore himself. Says he might take a chance and let me use the place. If I give him a thousand bucks. A thousand bucks? In cash. He would not even take my marker. Your marker's no good, huh? What do you mean? A marker ain't just a piece of paper that says I owe you 1,000 sign eighth in Detroit. A marker is like a pledge on which a guy can't welch on. It is like not saluting the flag. <laughs> My marker is as good as gold. Only Joey and Biltmore don't think so. It does not seem possible, me without a livelihood. Why, I have been running the crap game ever since I was a juvenile delinquent. Nathan, can't you do something? What can I do? I am broke. I could not even buy a later present today. And you know what today is? It is mine and Adelaide's 14th anniversary. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. We've been engaged for 14 years. <laughs> Nathan, concentrate on the game. The town is up to here with high players. The Greek is in town. Randy Bottle Bates. Sprint and slip. I know, I could make a fortune, but where can I have the game? The Biltmore Garage wants a grand, but we ain't got a grand on hand. And they now have a lock on the door at the gym at Public School 84. There's a stop room behind McCloskey's bar, but Mrs. McCloskey ain't a good scout. And things being how they are, the back of the police station is out. So the Biltmore Garage is the spot, but the 1,000 bucks we ain't got. Why, it's good old reliable Nathan, 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 Nathan Detroit. If you're looking for action, he'll furnish the spot. Even when the heat is on, it's never too hot. Not for good old reliable Nathan, for it's always just a short walk to the oldest established permanent floating crap game in New York. There 
on account he had bet 10 C's and his temperature would go to 104. Did it? Did it. He's so lucky he went to 106. Good old Sky. Maybe you could borrow the money from Sky. Oh, not Sky. With him that kind of money ain't lending money. It's betting money. So why don't I bet him? Why don't I bet him a thousand bucks on something? You would bet with Sky Masterson? I ain't scared. I am perfectly willing to take the risk. Providing I can figure out a bet in which there is no chance of losing. <coughs> he likes crazy bets, like which lump of sugar will a fly sit on, or how far you can kick a piece of cheesecake. Cheesecake! Ooh! Look, run into Mindy's restaurant and find out how many pieces of cheesecake he sold yesterday. Also, how much strudel. How much cheesecake? How much strudel? What do you want to know that for? Just find out. Now beat it. Here comes Adelaide. If she hears I'm running the crap game, she will never set foot on me again. Hello, Nathan, dear. Adelaide, pigeon. You go ahead, Grill. Order me a tuna fish on boy and a chocolate sundae with tomato ketchup and mayonnaise. Okay, Adelaide. We gotta get back to the hot box. You still rehearsing? Yeah, that slave driver Charlie. He's been working us all day. Finally, I says, look, Charlie, I'm starving. I gotta get out of here and get me something to eat. And he says, you don't want to eat. You want to sneak out and meet that cheap bum, Nathan Detroit. So what did you say to him? I told him. I says, I'll meet whoever I want. Well, don't get yourself upset. Oh, how's your cold? Oh, it's much better, thank you. Nathan, happy anniversary. A present for me? I hope you like it. A belt. Read the card. <laughs> Sugar is sweet and so is jelly. So put this belt around your belly. <laughs> That's so sweet. Look, honey, about your present, I was going to get you a diamond wristwatch with a gold band and two rubies on the side. Oh, Nathan, you shouldn't have. It's all right. I didn't. I am sorry. No. I don't like it when you forget to give me presents. It makes me feel like we were married. Don't worry, honey. One of these days I'll be in the money, and you'll have more mink than a mink. Nathan, I can do without anything, just so long as you don't start running that crap game again. Crap game? Mm -hmm. What an absurd thought. <laughs> hey, 1,200 cheesecake and 1,500 strudel. Huh? Yesterday, Mindy sold 1,200 cheesecake and 1,500 strudel. More strudel than cheesecake. That's great. Nathan, what is this? Nothing, honey. Hey, Detroit. Any news yet? Not yet, Harry. I will let you know. Okay, Nathan. Nathan, what was that about? Uh, his wife's having a baby. Well, why is he asking you? He's nervous. It's his first wife. <laughs> Look, honey, I'm expecting a fellow, and I know you're hungry. Nathan, are you trying 
to get rid of me? No, I just don't want your sandwich to get soggy. <laughs> Fellas, why don't you take Adelaide across the street to the drugstore? You see, honey, you've got a cold. And uh, it's across the street. And there are a lot of open manholes around. Oh, Nathan, around. darling, you're so thoughtful. You're just the sweetest person. Goodbye! Goodbye. Hey, Masterson, glad to see you. Guy Nathan, you old promoter, you. How are you? Nevada, great place. Beautiful scenery, healthful climate, and I feed them for 50 G's of blackjack. 50 G's? Couldn't be in town long? No, I'm flying to Havana tomorrow. Havana? Yes. There's a lot of action down there. You want to come with me? No, I got a lot of things to do around here. Meantime, how about dropping over to Mindy's restaurant for a piece of cheesecake? They sell a lot of cheesecake. No, I'm not hungry. Tell me, how's Adelaide? Fine, fine. Still dancing at the hot box. I suppose one of these days you'll be getting married? We all gotta go sometime. But Nathan, we can fight it. Guys like us, Nathan. We gotta remember that as pleasant as the doll's company may be, she must always take second place to ace back to back. Yeah, yeah. Tell me, you hungry yet? Maybe we could go to Mindy's and have a piece of cheesecake or a strudel or something. No, I think I'll go get the late results. Oh! But you will admit that Mindy sells the greatest cheesecake in the country. Yes, I'm quite partial to Mindy's cheesecake. Who ain't? And yet there are some people who prefer Mindy's strudel. Offhand, which do you think he sells more of? The cheesecake or the strudel? Well, I never give it much thought. But I'd say if everybody is like I am, Mindy sells much more cheesecake than strudel. But how much? Huh? But how much? Why, Nathan? I never knew you to be a betting man. You always take a percentage from the top. Well, I figured for old time's sake, I'd give you a piece of the action. I will bet you a thousand bucks that yesterday Mindy sold more strudel than cheesecake. Nathan, let me tell you a little story. Oh? When I was a young man about to go out into the world, my father says to me a very valuable thing. He says to me like this. Son, this is the old guy says, I'm sorry I'm not able to bankroll you to a very large sum. But having no potatoes to give you, I'm now going to save you with some very valuable advice. What these days in your travels, the guy's going to come up to you with a nice brand new deck of cards on which the seal is not yet broken. And this guy is going to offer to bet you that he can make the jack of spades jump out of the deck and squirt cider in your ear. But son, do not bet this man. For as sure as you stand there, you are going to wind up in the earful of sight. Now, Nate, I do not claim that you have been clocking with the Oh, you don't think However, that. if you're looking for some action, I'll bet you the same thousand dollars that you do not know the color of the necktie you were wearing. Well, no bet. Polka dots. Of all the days in Nathan Detroit's life, I picked this one day to wear polka dots. We took Adelaide to the truck store. Oh, father. Hi, it's Guy. Good. How's it with you fellas? Not bad. Nice and nice. We took Adelaide to the drugstore, and she says to pick her up at the hot box after the show. And don't be late. Yes, dear. I'm okay. Yes, dear. <laughs> that is husband talk if I ever heard it. Nathan, you are trapped. In Adelaide, you have the kind of girl which is most difficult to unload. But I don't want to unload her. Well, I love Adelaide. And a guy without a doll, well, if a guy does not have a doll, who will holler at him? A doll is a necessity. Nathan, I'm not putting the rap on dolls. I just say a guy should have them around when he wants them. And they're easy to find. Oh, not dolls like Adelaide. Bigger and weight for age, all dolls are the same. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> then, uh, how come you ain't got a doll? How come you are going to Havana alone? Without one? Oh, I like to travel light. But if I was to take a doll to the battle with me, there was a large assortment of valuables. Oh, not real high class dolls. Any doll. Any doll? And I name her? Will you bet on that? Will you bet a thousand dollars that if I name a doll, you will take her to a battle with you tomorrow? You go to bet. I name her. Her? Daddy, I got cider in my ear.
got cider in my ear. <laughs> Someday I'm going to take a pickaxe and rip off Broadway from end to end. The do that to every day. Do you take sinners here? Indeed we do. Sarah. How do you do? My name is Abernathy. Arvai Abernathy. Sky Masterson. What's wrong? What is the trouble? My heart is heavy with sin. You poor man. I have wasted my life in gambling and evil betting. But I have suddenly realized the terrible things that betting can lead to. Agatha! Coffee! Didn't I see you a little while ago on Broadway? Possibly. I've been wandering around trying to get the courage to come here. And you're willing to give up gambling? I would have never become a gambler at all had I not fallen in with evil companions who were always offering me sucker bets. Here, young man. Thank you. It makes me feel good just to talk to you people. You just go right on talking to Sister Sarah and you'll be all right. I'm glad you found us. The Bible says, seek and ye shall find. Very good. I wish we could reach more sinners like you. We're out every day trying. Well, maybe you should try the night time. How's that? As a former sinner, I happen to know that the best time to find sinners is between midnight and dawn. You might even try having an all-night session against the devil. A very good suggestion indeed. Thank you, Brother Masterson. You're welcome. <coughs> Coffee is so good, I can't understand why it isn't a sin. <coughs> Fine, old gentleman. I suppose he sort of looks after you. We look after each other. Uh-huh. I suppose if either of you goes someplace, the other goes along? Yes, of course. Of course. Here are two of our pamphlets I'd like you to read. I'm sure they will bring you a great deal of comfort. Thank you. And we're holding a midnight prayer meeting this Thursday, which I'm sure you will wish to attend. I'm sure. Miss Sauer, I hope you will not think I am getting out of line. But I think it is wonderful to see a pretty doll, <clears throat> a nice-looking lady like yourself sacrificing your time for the sake of others. Staying here in this place. Do you ever go anyplace else? Travel or something? Well, I would like to go to Africa. Well, that's a little far. But there are many wonderful places just a few hours from New York. By plane. Ever been in a plane? No. Oh, it's wonderful. Here is another camp that I think you should read. Thank you. <clears throat> of course, I'll need a lot of personal help. From you. My heart is as black as two feet down a wolf's gullet. I'll be speaking at the Thursday prayer meeting. I'll need private lessons. Why don't we have dinner or something? I think not, Mr. Masterson. Sorry. Just blossoming under the warmth of your kindness. <laughs> hey, that's wrong. What's wrong? It's not Proverbs. It's Isaiah. It's Proverbs. Sorry. No peace unto the wicked. Isaiah, chapter 57, verse 22. Isaiah? Isaiah. There are two things been in every hotel room in the country. Sky Masterson and the Gideon Bible. <laughs> I must have read the good book 10 or 12 times. You've read the Bible 12 times. What's wrong with the Bible? Besides, in my line of business, the strangest information frequently comes in handy. I once won five G's on a parlay. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Tell me, Mr. Masterson, why are you here? I told you I'm a sinner. You're lying. Well, lying's a sin. <laughs> Look, I'm a big sinner. If you get me, it's eight to five, the others will follow. You need sinners, don't you? We're managing. Let's be honest. This mission is laying an egg. Why don't you let me help you? I'll bet I can fill this place with sinners. I don't bet. I'll make you a proposition. When is this big meeting of yours? Thursday? I will guarantee to fill that meeting with one dozen genuine sinners. I will also guarantee that they sit still and listen to you. And what's my end of the bargain? Have dinner with me. Why do you want to have dinner with me? I'm hungry. Here. <laughs> What's this? Sky Masterson's market for 12 sinners. If you don't think it's good, ask anybody in town. I owe you one dozen sinners. I'll pick you up at noon tomorrow for dinner. At noon? It'll take us some time to get there. 
To get where? To my favorite restaurant. And where is that? El Cafe Cubana in Havana. El Cafe Cubana? Havana? Well, where do you want to eat? Howard Johnson's? Havana? Why not? The plane gets us there in five hours, in fact, the same night. And the food is great. I now realize, Mr. Gambler, when you were describing the blackness of your heart, you didn't do yourself justice. And I now realize, Sister Sour, that no matter how beautiful a sergeant is, she's still a sergeant. Please go away. Why don't you change your pitch, Sarge? Come to the mission, one and all, except guys. I hate guys. I don't hate anybody. Except me. I am relieved to know that it's just me personally, and not all guys in general. It's nice to know that somewhere in the world there's a guy who might appeal to the sergeant. I wonder what this guy would be like. He will not be a gambler. Well, I am not interested in what he will not be. I am interested in what he will be. Don't worry. I'll know. For Scarsdale, Galahad, the breakfast eating Brooks Brothers type. Yes. And I shall You've got this guy all figured out, huh? I have. Including what he smokes. All figured out. All figured out.
I'll drop in again in case you want to take a crack at the other cheek. <laughs>
Joey Biltmore. <laughs> Hello, Nathan, dear. Hello, hi, Faith. Hello, you handsome. Fine. Oh, what have you got there? A book. A book? You're always reading books. <laughs> You're becoming a regular bookie. Nathan, this is very interesting. The doctor gave it to me. I went to the bout my cold. How is your cold? Oh, it's the same. So the doctor asked me how long I had had it, and I told him a long time. And I said I thought it was on account of me dancing with probably the clothes on, which is usually what I wear. So he said to read this book because it might be due to psychology. You haven't got that, have you? Oh, Nathan. This is the kind of psychology that tells you why girls do certain kinds of things. Oh. Would it tell you, uh... What kind of doll would go for a certain kind of guy, which you wouldn't think she would do so? What do you mean? I'm just for instance. There are certain dolls you can almost bet they wouldn't go for certain guys. Nathan, no matter how terrible a fellow seems, you can never be sure that some girl will go for him. Take us. Yeah? Nathan, starting with next week, I'm going to get a raise. So, what fun you making? I wondered what you think. Maybe we could finally get married. Well, of course we're going to sooner or later. I know, Nathan, but I'm starting to worry about Mother. Your mother? What about your mother? Oh, well, Nathan, this is something I never told you before. But my mother, Captain Rhode Island, she thinks we're married already. Why would she think a thing like that? I couldn't be engaged for 14 years, could I? People don't do that in Rhode Island. They all get married. Then why is it such a small state? <laughs> Did, huh? Uh -huh. Then, after about two years. What after about two years? We had a baby. You told your mother we had a baby? I had to, Nathan. Mother wouldn't have understood if we hadn't. Well, uh, what type of baby was it? It was a boy. I named it after you, Nathan. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, just where is Nathan Jr. supposed to be now? Oh, he's in boarding school. I wrote Mother he won his football game last Saturday. Wish I had bet on it. But Nathan, that's not all, Nathan. Don't tell me he has a little sister. Oh, all those years, Nathan. Mother believed in big families. Just give me the grand total. <laughs> Your mother must be a glutton for punishment. But now we're finally getting married, and it wouldn't be a lie anymore. Adelaide, how could you do such a thing? to a nice old broad like your mother. But you don't even know my mother. But I'll be meeting her soon. And what will I tell her? What will I tell her I did with the five kids? Traded them to the Phillies or something? <laughs> what are we gonna do? We could get married. But marriage ain't the type of thing that you jump into like it was a kettle of fish. Besides, we ain't ready yet. Oh, I'm ready, Nathan. Nathan, what do you think I've got in this box? Nathan, what do you think I've got in this box? Sally's wedding shop. Oh, I can't guess. It's a wedding veil. I've had it for three years. I'll jump you to the veil. Look. Would you like to see it? It's bad luck. Anyway, Nathan, I've got the veil. All we need now is our license and our blood test. A what? Blood test? It's a law. What a city. First they closed down my crap game. Oh. And now they open my veins. Nathan, you're not planning to run that crap game again. Adelaide, how could you think such a thing? Why do you think I gave up that lousy crap game? Because I love you. 
And I want us two to be the happiest married couple in the world. Anybody see a Mary out here? I don't think so. You! I'm all dating up tomorrow to society mess, and he breaks it on account of your dopey crap game. Ah, uh -huh, Miss Adelaide, I pity you. Oh, here it is. Adelaide, look at me, I'm down on my knees. Oh, get up! It reminds me of your crap game. Look, you're getting yourself all upset. You and I are gonna be all right. Besides, we love each other, and we're gonna get married. I don't believe you anymore! But it's true. You'll feel better tomorrow. Come on, cheer up. Let's see that old smile. That's my girl. I'll see you tomorrow.
be nice. What are you looking at? Scott was just following Miss Sarah. You should have seen her. She gives him a look that would have pulled off a moose and made him kind. Great. Let's hope you don't have to take it out of my hand. For that, I'm going to take this doll to Nervous Shell. What is Nate? Do you want to be minding up the game? I don't know. I suppose trying to see it sadly. She's mad at him again. Mad at him sadly. Always taking his mind off honest work. You know what I see. It's too bad that a smart businessman like Nathan has to fall in love with his own fiance. But Benny, we should be tolerant because it is his weakness. But I am told that it is a worldwide weakness. Look! What's playing in the rock scene? I'll tell you what's playing in the rock scene. Picture about a Minnesota man so in love with a Mississippi girl that he sacrifices everything and moves all the way to Biloxi. That's what's played at the Roxy. What's in the daily news? I'll tell you what's in the daily news. Story about a man who bought his wife a small food with what otherwise would have been too good. That's what's in the daily news. What's happening all over? I'll tell you what's happening all over. Guy sitting home by a television set that used to be something of a rover. That's what's happening all over. Love is a thing that has wrecked them. And it looks like hate is just another victim. Yes, sir. When you see a guy, you're stuck in the sky. You can bet that he's doing it for some Talk to you about. Won't you come inside and have some lunch with us? No, I don't have time, dear. 
so I have several other calls to make. Sarah, we at headquarters have come to a definite conclusion. We have decided to close this branch of the mission. Oh no! Close the mission? But General, please, someone can do good here even if I can't. Sarah, there are so many other calls on us, so many other places where our work is really needed. But we're doing so much better now. Yes, we've announced a big street meeting for tomorrow night. You've announced a meeting, but will anyone be here? Will anybody come? Pardon me, but I couldn't help over here. General, my name is Sky Masterson, former Senator. How do you do? How do you do? I wish to protest the closing of this mission. I believe Miss Sarah could be a big success here. I'm glad to hear you say that, but I'm not so certain. A dollar will get you ten. What? General, might I make a suggestion? Yes. Why don't you come to the meeting tomorrow night and find out for yourself? Don't you think that'd be a good idea? Well, if I thought the mission had a chance... General, I personally guarantee you one dozen genuine sinners. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Okay, but where is the game? I'll tell you yeah. in a minute. Hey, stop. Tell the guys that the game is no longer on. Not yet. I got a small game now. Joey wants his dope first, but they won't play much longer. So soon. I left nicely at my hotel to wait for the money from the sky. It'll be my ass. Where's the game? It has not come yet. I told you to wait for it. I had to get some groceries, but I felt a little faint. <laughs> Get back to the hotel, wait for the money from the sky, and don't come back without it, even if you have to stop. Okay. Where's the game, Detroit? Why, Harry the horse. How are you, Harry? How's everything in Brooklyn? Detroit, if you do not have no place to go back in, huh, and we shall seek elsewhere for entertainment. Now, nah, take it easy, Harry. Detroit, I hope you will not spoil our evening. And as much as I happen to be entertaining, a very prominent guest tonight, I think you might have heard of it. I would like you to meet Big Julie from Chicago. Why, how do you do, Big Julie? Welcome to our fair city, in which, as you know, the heat is on. But just be patient, and you will get some action. <laughs> what do you say, Big Julie? Should we stick around, or shall we blow? I came here to shoot crap. My shoot crap. Yeah, yeah let's come on. Sure. Detroit, if there is no crap game tonight, I am sure Big Julie will be considerably displeased. <coughs> And Big Julie does not like to be displeased, as you can find out from those citizens who at one time or another have displeased them. Although I will admit it is very hard to find such things, due to the fact that they are no longer around or about. Why, Harry, you don't think I would be so rude as to displease a gentleman like Big Julie here? Big Julie, believe me when I tell you that when Nathan Detroit, when uh, Nathan Detroit, when Nathan Detroit arranges something, you can count on it that... Well, well. An interesting gathering indeed. The Cream Society. Angie the Ox. Society Max. Rusty Charlie. Liver Lips Louie. And hey, Harry the Horse. All the way from Brooklyn. And... Pardon me. I'm not very good with names, but your face looks familiar. Where are you from? East Cicero, Illinois. <laughs> yeah? And what do you do there? I'm a scoutmaster. <laughs> well, don't ever have my mother across the street. <coughs> hmm. Lovely. This looks like the male chorus from Blossom Time. What's the occasion? Well, um, uh, I mean, it's a pie. What kind of a party? It's a pie, Cleo. It's a pie, Cleo. It's a bachelor party. Nathan's getting married. It's a bachelor party. It's a bachelor party. Nathan is getting married. Yes, sir. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. Which nobody can hide. 
Slugger, it's over and you're still champ. Are you all right? Am I all right? Ask me, how do I feel now that we're cold? Streets. 
janitor with a mop And the grocery clerks are all gone When the smell of the brainwashed pavement Comes up clean and fresh and cold And the street Good morning, Brother Masters. Good morning. We followed your suggestion and stayed out all night. We've spoken to a lot of sinners. Where have you been, Sarah? I've been to Cuba. You're even more tired than I am. <laughs> must have tipped them off. I've seen a lot of strange things in my time, but never a crap game going full blast in a mission. Crap game? Sarah, you know I had nothing to do with this, don't you? Sarah! This would never have happened if I hadn't. I should never have gone with you. It was wrong. No, it wasn't. You went to help the mission. Did I? <laughs> well, I see you tomorrow. Everyone is welcome at the mission. That's not what I mean. It's no good, Sky. You said it yourself. It's no good. Why not? What the hell kind of doll are you, anyway? I'm a mission doll. 
For the feature number of the evening, the Hot Box proudly presents Miss Adelaide and the Debut Song! <laughs>
Will you be with Mr. Detroit, sir? Is he here? No, he hasn't been here all evening. Bring me a Ryan soda. Sky, have you seen Miss Adelaide? Huh? I bring a message for her from Nathan. Wish Nathan would bring his own messages. Well, what's the message? Where is Nathan? It's like this. Nathan's aunt in Pittsburgh was suddenly taken out with a... Uh... A uh, rare tropical disease. Hey, that's not bad. Anyway, Nathan has Nicely. to... Nicely. What's the message? Where is Nathan? The crap game is still going on. Since last night? Big jo Julie, being a large loser, does not want the game to terminate. In fact, he is most insistent. So we find another place and the game goes on. Where is the game? You look for some action? Not at the moment. But I do want to talk to some of the guys. You see, nicely. I gave a marker to, well, somebody. And I'd kind of like to clean it up. Before. I'll meet you outside. What about Nathan's message? Uh, Miss Adelaide? Nathan's in Pittsburgh with a rare tropical ant. Goodbye. What? to get married. You know Nathan. Why does it surprise you? But he promised to change. Change, change. Why is the minute you dolls get a guy you like, you take him right in for alterations? What about two men? Why can't you marry people like other people do and live normal like people? Have a home with wallpaper and bookends. No, Miss Adelaide. What do you mean, no? Well, guys like Nathan Detroit, and yeah, Sky Masterson, we don't belong in a life like that. So when dolls get mixed up with guys like us, it's no good. No good. See you in a couple of months. Where are you going? I don't know, Las Vegas maybe? I got a ticket on the late plane. Will you see Nathan before you go? Maybe. Tell him I never want to talk to him again. Oh, you. <laughs> Why don't you get another guy? I can't. I love Nathan. Wait till you fall for somebody. You'll see. Yeah. In other words, do some sitting alone at a table reserved for two. A place. Develop the flu. You can bundle her up in hopefulies, and I mean the warmest bread. You can wrap her in sweaters and coats with more than a friend can stand. If she still gets the feeling she's naked from looking at her left hand, a placer can develop the flu. Watching her memories and playing, and a story her folks can be told. Her place son, can develop a cold. <laughs> Respectable and well behaved. You saw what happened here last night? They gambled in our mission. And someday they'll be praying there. Even a man like Sky Masterson. He came seeking refuge. He came seeking me. Did you, Did you know that? Are you kidding? I knew that the minute he started picking on you. But I didn't know that you were going to get stuck on him. Don't worry, I'll get over it. What do you want to get over it for? It isn't pneumonia. The man I love will not be a gambler. But if you love him enough. He will not. Sarah, dear, I've always taken care of you. All I want is for you to be tired. Oh.
evening, Miss Sister Sour. Well, Brother Abernathy, how goes it with the soul saving? Tonight's the big meeting, isn't it? It's supposed to be. The general is coming. And she's expecting... The general's a tough doll, eh? Well, very few people will be there. In fact, nobody. Grandfather, I don't think Mr. Masterson is interested in our troubles. We've got to hurry. Sister Sour, I think you're forgetting something. But being a gambler, I never forget things like this. You hold my marker tonight for 12 centers. Thank you, Mr. Masterson, but I'd rather you forgot about it. I cannot welch on a marker. Mr. Masterson, last night the mission was filled with your friends. Let us say we are even. If you don't pay off on that marker, I'll tell the whole town you're a dirty welcher. Nicely. Where's the crap game? Well, Sky, it's about a ten minute walk from here. Which way? This way. Wait a minute! Where's everybody go? I came here to shoot crap! We had to shoot crap! Come on, let's go home. It's hot down here. You see, Big Julie, the fellas are slightly fatigued from weariness, having been shooting crap for quite a while now, namely 24 hours. Yeah. Yeah. I do not care who's tired. I'm out 25 Gs, so nobody leaves. Gentlemen, gentlemen, I begin to see the logic of Big Julie. It is not that Big Julie is a sore loser. It is merely that he prefers to win. Right, Big Julie? Give me the dice! I'm shooting 500. Take two on. I'm half dead. If you do not shut up, Big Julie will arrange the other half. Ha! And it's Snake Eyes. One and one. You lose. And fifty dollars for the house. But the dice are still yours, and your luck is Shut better. up! Another five. Two hundred more. Ha! Snake Eyes again. You lose. Tough luck, me, Julie. Well, that cleans me. Yes. But I ain't through yet. Uh -huh. I will now play on credit. Credit. See, Big Julie, the fellows are pretty tired. Of course, me, on the other hand, I happen to be fresh as a daisy. Then I will play with you. Me? Yeah, you. You've been breaking down at every pot. You must have by now uh, quite a bungle. Well. Being I assume the risk, it is only fair that I should assume some dough. Detroit, I'm going to roll you. We'll eat or nil. And if I lose, I will give you my marker. And if I lose, you will give him cash. Let me hear from Big Julie. You will give me cash. Now I heard it. Here is my marker. Put up your dough. Is anything wrong? No, no. I owe you 1,000 sign X. How is it you can write 1,000 and you cannot write your signature? I was good in arithmetic, but I stunk in English. <laughs> yeah, this will put you through Harvard. I'm rolling you for 1,000. And to change my luck, I will use my own dice. Your own dice? dice. I have made especially for me in Chicago. Big Julie, you cannot interpolate Chicago dice in a New York crap game. That is a breach of etiquette. Show me where it says that in Emily Post. Not that I wish to seem petty, but can I look at these dice? What? These dice ain't got no spots on them. Oh, no They're dice! I have spots taken off the lock. But I remember where the spots formerly was. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. You mean, you're going to roll blank dice and call them from remembering where the spots formerly was? Why not? I see no reason. A five and a five. My point is ten. Well, I still got a chance. Ha! A ten. You lose. A ten? A six and a four. Which is the six and which is the four? Either way, I win. Oh, I am now rolling you for two thousand. Oh, I just remembered. I'm eloping tonight. I gotta go meet Adelaide. Two thousand. Get it off. Hey. How about letting some of the other chaps in on the oh. After I'm through with you, two thousand. Ha! A seven. I win. What 
a surprise. Yeah. I think I will take it easy. What do you mean? I'm going to roll you for one dollar. I'll take all of it. How about that? Snake eyes, I lose. For this, I got to bend down? I will now give you a chance. I am going to roll you for three thousand. Three G's. Three G's. Put it down there. Wouldn't it be more convenient if I just put it right into your pocket? Three G's. Get it off. Ha! A lot. I win. Well, that cleans me. I will now play with you, Scott. Oh, Wait a minute. You gotta give me a chance to get even. I will now roll you with my dice. Okay, Detroit, that's fair. But what are you gonna use for money? I will give you my marker. And you want Big Julie to give you cash? Hey, Nathan done it. Yeah. Sure, I done it. done it. What kind of deal is this anyway? Take it easy, Nathan. Him with his no spot dice. Somebody ought to knock the spots off of him. Nathan, do not make Big Julie have to do something to you. Yeah, I'm on my vacation. So go ahead, shoot me. Put me in cement. At least I would know where I am. Here I risk my neck to set up a crap game. I even promised to get married on account of it. And look how I end up, broke in a sewer. <coughs> Believe me, my tough friend from Chicago, there is nothing you could do to me right now that would not cheer me up. Here they are. Good evening, gentlemen. Well, fresh blood. You looking for some action? Not at the moment. I would like to talk to some of you fellows. We ain't talking, we're shooting crap. Yeah. I am asking for only one minute. We are shooting crap. It has to do with Miss Sarah Brown's mission. <coughs> Say, who is this guy? It's the fellow I was telling you. Took the mission doll to Havana. Oh, I get it. Look, fella, why don't you go back to your praying tomato? You're slowing up the action around here. If you want action, would you care to make a small wager on a proposition? What's the proposition? Am I right-handed or left-handed? How would I know a thing like that? I'll give you a clue. Oh, oh, oh. and robots. Look, you guys. Tonight in Miss Sarah Brown's mission at 409 West 49th Street, they're holding a midnight prayer meeting. I promised I'd deliver to them some sinners. And when it comes to sinning, most of you guys are high among the paint cars. I don't want to spend no evening in a hallelujah joint. Yeah. If you won't do it as a favor to me, do it as a favor to yourselves. I guarantee you the air in the mission smells cleaner than down here. And maybe it wouldn't hurt you guys to learn something else. Besides the odds, I'm making a four the hard way. You've been reading the Bible too much. Yeah. yeah. For what? Maybe the Bible don't read as lively as a scratch sheet, but it is at least twice as accurate. I mean, I don't know about that. Well, I tried. Yeah. See you around, Nathan. Okay, Sky. About the Havana business. I regret I temporarily do not have the 1,000 to pay you. You don't have to pay me. You won. But. I thought you took Miss Sarah to Havana. You thought wrong. Okay, fat boy, get up. I now have the money to roll you, but with my dice. Let the okay. demon. With those dice, he cannot make a pass to save his soul. What'd you say? I says with them dice, Big Julie cannot make a pass to save his soul. Well, maybe I can make a pass to save his. What? And yours. What? And yours. What? And his. What are you talking about? I'm going to roll the dice. I will bet each of you a thousand dollars against your souls. One thousand cash against the marker for your souls. If I win, you all show up at the mission tonight. Is it okay? Yeah. yeah. Now let me get this. You will roll us, and if you lose, you will give us each a thousand dollars, and if you win, we have to show up at the Mission Dolls Cabaret. If I win, you show up at the mission. One meeting. Okay, by me. By me. By me. By me. By me. You too, Nathan. One thousand dollars against your soul. For me. I don't even know if I got a soul. You got one someplace. How do you spell soul? S. U. All right. Give me the dice. And give me room. Come on, will you quit stalling? Roll the dice. It's Matt Sky turning chicken. You see me roll for a hundred G's. And I've got a little more than dough riding on this one. 
They call you Lady Luck But there is room for doubt At times you have a very unladylike way of running out You're on this date with me The pickings have been lush and so, before the evening is over, you might give me the brush. You might forget your manners. You might refuse to stay. And so, the best that I can do is pray.
A little white house with a green fence, just like the Whitney Post. Nathan, we've got to do it soon. I've got a middle letter from Mother's Day. She asked me a lot of questions. And she put a letter for you, too. A letter for me? <laughs> from Mama? Wow. Well, dear son Nathan, this is my first letter to you, although you have been married to my daughter for 12 years now. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like I know you already through Adelaide's letters. And in my mind, I, I can see you as you go down to work every morning at 7. What a responsibility it must be to be the assistant manager at the AP. <laughs> I am not even the manager? I was going to promote you for Christmas. I know how hard you have to work to take care of your family. Adelaide, the five kids, and the one that's on the way? Mother wanted me to visit her, so I had to tell her that. Doesn't she know I cannot have six kids on what they pay me at the A&P? Uh, uh, I am very proud to have you as my son-in-law. You are a good man, and I know you will always take care of Adelaide. I feel like a heel. Nathan, we can still make everything all right. It's not even midnight yet. Five minutes to twelve. Let's elope right now. Okay, Adelaide. No, I can't. Why not? Come on, Nathan, we'll be late. Come on. Nathan, why can't we elope now? Well, I gotta go to a prayer meeting. Oh, Nathan, this is the biggest lie you ever told me. But I promise you it's true. You... Paper and sue me, sue me. What can you do me? I love you. Give a holler and hate me, hate me. Go ahead, hate me. When you wind up in jail, come to me. Watch fast. General, I know what's wrong. I'm wrong. I failed. 
I've spoken to these people day after day. I think it was better. Welcome, brothers. Welcome. Welcome. One dozen genuine sinners. Uh, sorry we didn't have time to clean them up. Why don't you gentlemen sit down? Yeah. Yeah. All of you. Yeah. I would like to welcome you gentlemen to the Save a Soul mission. Yeah. Yeah. Look guys, this is a mission, not Roseland. And I suggest you do not indulge yourself in any unpleasantness. Since I'm required to, the point, to depart from points west tonight, I'm appointing Nathan Detroit, Major Demo, I mean Domo, in my place. <laughs> Nathan, anybody who does not act according to Hoyle will answer to Sky Masterson personally. And that means in person. So remember that. Sit down, down, stupid. Remember that. Sit down. Brother Abernathy, <laughs> your dice. Gentlemen, we are honored tonight. The meeting will be conducted by the head of our organization, General Carter. <laughs> Come on, Benny, tell him what a bum you are. All right, Ben. I used to be a bad guy and a bad gambler, but now I'm going to be a good guy and a good gambler. There, don't you feel better now? I'll be okay. Anyone else? Big Julie. <coughs> well... I used to be bad when I was a kid, but ever since then I've gone straight, as I can prove by my record. 33 arrests and no convictions. Oh, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Please. Harry. Oh, no. Harry the horse. Uh, well, it's like the sky was rolling us for our souls. I beg your pardon. Sky Masterson. He rolled each one of us a thousand dollars against our souls. I That's why we're here. I don't think I understand. I think I do, General. What he means is that these gentlemen are here only because Mr. Masterson won them in a dice game? Yeah. 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 That's right. That's right, baby. How wonderful! This whole meeting, the result of gambling, it shows how good can come out of evil. Sergeant Sarah, you have done remarkable work. Hasn't she, though? Thank you. Wait a minute. I ain't finished my testimony yet. My sins is that when Sky rolled us, I wished I would win the thousand dollars instead of having to come here. But now that I'm here, General, I still wish this. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, we will now hear testimony from Brother Nicely Nicely Johnson. Brother Nicely Nicely Johnson. Get up, you fat water buffalo! <laughs> well, it happened to me sort of funny. Like in a dream. Yeah, that's it, a dream. Tell us in your own words. I dreamed last night I got on the boat to heaven And by some chance I had brought my dice along And there I stood and I hollered, someone paid me. But the passengers, they know right from wrong. For the people all said, sit down. Sit down, you're rocking the boat. The people all said, sit down. Nicely passing out the whiskey 
for you, Brother Brannigan. Maybe you would care to testify? I'll do my testifying in court, where I'll testify that you ran a crap game here in this mission last night. Miss Sarah, you saw them. You were standing there when they came out. Aren't these the fellows? Lieutenant, I've never seen these gentlemen before in my life. All right. All right. All right. Now that's a right draw. Yeah. If you would excuse me, officer. We would like to get on with our meeting. Yeah. I never seen crap shooters spend so much time in a mission. Maybe that's what they mean by holy rollers. Thank you, Miss Sarah. People, I also have a confession to make. We did shoot crap here last night, and for that, we were all very sorry. Ain't we, boys? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. But I didn't. I'm not really sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> But I did another terrible thing. I made a bet with a certain guy that he could not take a certain doll on a trip with him. And this I should not have done. Although it did not do any harm, seeing as I won the bet. You won the bet? Sure. The guy told me he did not take the doll. Well, that makes me feel a lot better. Hallelujah. 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 Gentlemen, we will now sing number 244, Follow the Fold. Thank you, thank you. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Wouldn't it? 
If only Sky. But they just can't change. A little while ago at our prayer meeting, there were a lot of gamblers who acted as though maybe they could change. Yes, but that doesn't. Gamblers at your prayer meeting was in Nathan Detroit there. I'm sure I heard that name. A darling little fellow with a cute little mustache. <laughs> I think so. How do you like that rat? tonight, Adelaide and I? Certainly. 
My married brother, Master Sin, and sister Sarah, glad to do the same for you. Congratulations, Nathan. I'll lay you eight to five. You'll be very happy. What Obadiah means is... Obadiah? He wishes you every happiness, and so do I. Thank you very much, and I know we're going to be happy. We're going to have a little home in the country, and Nathan will be sitting beside me every single night. <laughs>
in progress. Each program comes with a...